Good morning, Miami Dolphins fans. How are you today? And thank you for listening to DolphinsTalk.com Daily on this Thursday, October the 15th. I am your host, Mike. Joining me as always, like he does every Thursday, is Ian Berger from right here at DolphinsTalk.com. Ian, how are you doing this week? Fins up, Mike. Happy Thursday morning after an amazing win. Uh, this week has just been great from start to finish so far. Yep, and we are on YouTube this week as well as promised. So if you're listening, you know, via iTunes or Spotify or SoundCloud, you're hearing the show there. But if you want to actually watch us this week because of what we said last week, if the Miami Dolphins beat San Francisco, Biggie Ian Berger would, for Manscaped, shave a part of his body. And we are going to do that later on in the show. We're so going to test we, it out. Lawnmower 3.0. Yes, Lawnmower sir. 3.0. We promised to put the show on YouTube. Hopefully we don't get thrown off YouTube. Hopefully the NFL doesn't suspend us like they did with Ian Rappaport. We'll talk about that later as well. He got a raw deal. He, Ian I Rappaport agree. got a raw deal. Uh, first things first, how was your birthday on Sunday? Aside from the Dolphins win. You know what? It was terrific. I uh, got to eat my favorite food, which is uh, Hooters chicken wings, and I get it delivered. So I know some people are like, oh, you go to Hooters because they've got some very pretty <laughs> girls. And honestly, my entire life, I've gone to that restaurant because I love their wings. They have the best wings, in my opinion, over anyone else. So uh, got it picked up. My wife actually picked it up during the game, and uh, we ate it at halftime of the Dolphins nice. versus 49ers game. And you know what? I got a chance to spend time with the family, and everybody wished me happy birthday. And then, of course, the Dolphins win. So that was like the cherry on the top. It was perfect. It was a great yeah. day. We don't have a Hooters up by where I live. We used to have a couple, but they closed down, and uh, that's it. We don't have any, unfortunately, up by uh, where I live. But, yes, they are a fun time. Um, never had Hooters to go, though, but... <laughs> it works. It's Hooters great. To go. Hooters to yeah, go. Yeah, it's great. Be, that needs to be a slogan I should sell to them. Okay. Uh, and also, I'd like to point out that your undefeated streak this week came to an end. Come on, Mike. You football, had to say it. In the DolphinsTalk.com Staff Fantasy Football League, as me... CEO and president beat you, the undefeated first place team, and put a wallop on you, 163 to 128, ending your run to start the season. Congratulations. But I lost my quarterback in the process, so I'll probably never win a game again because <laughs> Prescott broke his leg in two, as we all know. Sad, okay, man. let's talk about the Miami Dolphins and the outstanding, spectacular, fantastic Almost flawless game they played Sunday at San Francisco. I didn't see it coming. You did. I didn't. Um, really, there's not much to talk about because when they played like that, everyone brought their A-plus game. And what's to talk about? If they play like that every week, nobody's going to beat them. You know, Mike, They from start to finish, they were almost perfect in every aspect of the game. What I loved, and one thing we were talking about last week was – Ryan Fitzpatrick really challenged the 49ers with those bombs. And that's what I actually said. That was one of the reasons that I wanted to see Tua because we haven't seen those passes over 20 yards. And if I remember correctly, I think there were five passes over 20 yards during that game on Sunday. And he did what, what we want uh, the quarterback to do, put it in an area where the wide receiver or the tight end can jump up and catch the ball. And you saw that all day long with Devontae. And a healthy Preston Williams. Thank goodness he's back. He's healthy, and he looked great. Um, so I think, uh, you know, there's not a lot you can say. I mean, you can definitely nitpick, but I don't want to do that. I'm I'm enjoying this, and I think it puts some of those critics kind of to bed, too, because a lot of people said that we were going to walk into the 49ers and and we were going to be, you know, the laughing stock, and, and it was going to be just like every other season. Well, now all those people have kind of reversed course because – we look so strong. I, I'm not going to say it. I mean, I hate to say it, but some people are saying, hey, if we can win, put a couple of strings of wins together, who knows one. where we'll end this year. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing how one game can have that type of impact on the fan base. Yeah, absolutely. And they, you know, they showed up in every aspect, offense, um, special teams, and also on defense as well, which we saw a little bit in the Jacksonville game, but this was a whole other level because San Francisco – is a much better team than Jacksonville. Even with a few guys out, they're still a much better team. Christ, they almost won the Super Bowl last year. That's all I need to know. I mean, they were this close. So, um, I mean, there's really not much to talk about because they showed up. And one thing we are going to talk about this week, we, which we have talked about in recent weeks, is the backup quarterback to a tongue of Iloa. Because the one thing that stops that controversy, that stops the entire debate, 
is when they win games. And mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick, we know, each week it's a roller coaster. And anyone who thinks now he's going to be this every week is just lying to themselves. Yeah. He won't. But if they win games and he doesn't turn the ball over, then there's nothing to talk about with Tua Tonga Vailoa. And that's okay. And I don't care what ESPN, and I don't care what the analysts, the NFL Network, talking about Herbert and this, that. It means nothing because every situation isn't the same. And with Tua, I mean, as long as we're winning, he can sit there. That's fine. Now, if Fitzpatrick puts out two or three stinkers in a row, that yes, that changes things. I mean, it just does. That's the reality of the NFL. Yeah, and and you know, we everybody tries to compare the situation to the situation with Aaron Rodgers and the situation with um, what's his face with the Chiefs, Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, of Which course. Which I went over a couple weeks ago. It makes no sense. It doesn't because you know those were already playoff teams, and they just helped those teams get to the next level where, Hey, you know what? Maybe this year ends up becoming a playoff team. And then two of then takes us to the next level, but that's how the process worked with them. Um, you know, but we'll see, we'll see that, you know, with Fitzpatrick, if he has a couple of great games then you're not going to be hearing that pressure like we had last week. And again, I was on the, let's start to why not what's to lose. But now that I saw Fitzpatrick have that great game and now I know we're going up against the jets this weekend. I'm like, Hey, we've got, you know, the buy after that. Then you got Denver. It might be a while now that before we actually see Tua. Who knows? Well, they don't, well, they don't quite have the Broncos after the buy, but it's got, trust me, we'll go That's over right. all that Char- too. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a disaster. You oh. got to have, you got to have like a, you know, like a graph <laughs> and a chart to keep track. And who knows? It probably will change again, actually. Yeah. But correct. They look fantastic and there's not much to talk about there. One thing I, we were going to talk about this a little on our rundown. But uh, just prior to recording, Adam Schefter kind of blew the story up where we have to talk about it a little bit more. That is, prior to the Jets releasing Le'Veon Bell, Adam Schefter of ESPN is reporting, the Miami Dolphins called about possibly trading for him. Um, They were one of the three teams, I guess, who called right before the Jets released him to see if they could acquire him via trade. Now, his contract's, you know, tough to trade. So I'm sure that is what scared away all the teams in the end. But it did, it does show that. Miami had interest in Bell, which I got to be honest, I'm shocked because to me, he, I mean, he's at this stage of the game, he's a good running back. He's not great anymore. He's good. He can help the Dolphins clearly. No one's not going to take that away from him. The off the field stuff, and I'll run down some of it here. This guy is a low character individual. He has lots of issues off the field, and I don't see him meshing well at all with head coach Brian Flores. Just my opinion. Now, look, they might be in a situation here in Miami where, like, you know, we're two and three. We got the Jets coming up. We have a bye. We think we can make a playoff run. We don't care. We need a guy who can help us win. And we'll look the other way on some of the -the off-the-field stuff. Might be the case, which, if that's the case, that's fine. But, you know, then you also can't push character and stuff other times when you talk about it. So what are your thoughts on Le'Veon Bell? So when I talk about Le'Veon Bell, I think about Jordan Howard. And, you know, I think about how we spent the money for Jordan Howard this offseason. And, yeah, he's gotten us three touchdowns. But I think he's gotten, I think it's 16 yards on 19 carries or 19 yards on 16 carries. And the Dolphins didn't even allow him to dress for this past weekend's game. You know, so th- there's something there. And, and if you can get someone who's even got some talent – that could take that spot and be able to do some things. And we knew, you know, you have to think of what three years ago when Le'Veon was last with the Pittsburgh Steelers and he was, he was pretty much their offense, right? He was one of their top wide receivers. And when, when he would go out to the outside, he was obviously their best running back. He was just an all around great player. And then he took that step back, which I think everybody now, especially now in hindsight are saying him taking that year off was a mistake because he ultimately lost a lot of money. Um, and, and then he went to the Jets, which the Jets were not a good team. And it's a very different culture between Pittsburgh and the Jets. And they, they distribute the ball very differently. So I think the, the phrase that comes to mind is low risk, high reward. Because at this point for this year, you really wouldn't need to pay him that much because the Jets have already paid him, right? And they've already given him a, a big sum of money. I think in his mind, he wants to go somewhere that he can win. He wants to go somewhere that he can prove that he still has some gas in the tank 
and that he can do well. And, you know, I, I threw this out on Twitter um, and I've gotten various degrees of oh, opinions, yeah. you know, and, and some people say he's a, he's a cancer in the locker room, but I, the more I looked into it, I'm like, I really didn't see a lot of cancer. Now, was he a diva? I think yes. But was he a cancer where he was always negative? I didn't really see that too much, but also with that being said, um, you know, again, if he can add any value, I think coach Flores can bring him in if he doesn't work out. Cause he's not going to, he's not going to get signed to a $13 million a year contract. He's no, he, I'd be surprised. He's going to take the vet minimum because correct. the jets have to pay the rest. So no team will pay him more than a vet minimum because he's getting paid in full regardless. It's just who writes the check. So right. any team that signs him will sign him for the vet minimum for however much it is. And the jets fill in the rest. So he's not, it's pretty much where he wants to go at this point. Right. So, so it'll be interesting, you know, if, if he ends up coming to the Dolphins, it'll be interesting to see how he works. And I don't think Flores is going to allow him to, to mess with the locker room. I really feel that these guys have really built a, a great camaraderie together, especially the young guys, because there's so many rookies and so many second year players that I don't think coach Flores will allow someone to come in and wreck that. And I have to, I have to say this because I've seen this too, this comment a couple of times. When you look at the New England Patriots and what Belichick has done, he's taken a good handful of players that were supposedly cancers in other teams' locker rooms, Randy Moss, and he made them into great players on that team. Now, sometimes that worked, and other times it didn't work, right? So, um, But he gave them that chance to be successful, and he gave them that chance to do great things, which allowed them to get paid more money too, by the way which always helps. So I think that's when Moss went from the Patriots and then he went over to the Raiders, if I remember correctly, and signed another nice contract. Or am I getting it backwards? I don't know. I think he went from the Raiders to the Patriots. Then after that, I forgot, honestly. Uh, It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, because he also signed Chad Ocho. Cinco, it didn't work out. He cut him quick. So, I mean, you can try, guys. If it's not working out, though, you got to cut bait quick because you can't leave those guys around because it never ends well. Um, With Le'Veon Bell, here's some – now – if he wants to go to a quote-unquote winner, Miami's not going to be top of the list. Not that Miami's bad, so don't, don't really take this as a shot. Just there are teams that are more, that are closer, let's just say. With that said, though, he does spend time in South Florida, which has gotten him in some trouble, Lee. Let me tell you the most famous story, in case you may have forgotten this. A few years ago, I think this was 2018, he was with his, not one girlfriend, two girlfriends. I remember why, that, yes. Why have one when you can have two? Yes. And he left them alone in his house with $500,000 worth of jewelry. He left his two girlfriends. I don't think he was serious with either one of them. And he went to the gym. Well, when he came back on that faithful day, which I think was in May, <laughs> the jewelry and the girls were, were gone. both gone. Bye. And he made the frantic 911 call. And that was in South Florida. So, you know, and plus he's also been spotted at um, some famous, you know, clubs in South Florida. Um, so he likes the South Florida lifestyle, which would kind of scare me if I'm the Dolphins. That's that's just me. It, it's something you have to have a conversation with. Also, when he sat out all those months that one season, he also put out a rap album, which is which was titled, which I think is funny after the last story, Life is a Gamble. Well, life is a gamble <laughs> when you leave two not serious girlfriends in your house with $500,000 worth of jewelry. The guy isn't known for making smart decisions off the field. On the field, he can still play. Now, he's not the MVP level type player. He was in 2016, 2015. He's not that guy, but he's still good. He's good. I'm not saying he's not good. I just question if if we even need him with Miles Gaskin and Matt Breida right now. They're playing well. Jordan Howard, he was a healthy scratch, like you said. I think his days are numbered. I think he's gone here in, you know, within a month. They pretty much paid him a one-year front-loaded deal. They can cut him after this year and have no dead money against the cap. So if you can cut him after the year, you can cut him now at this point because he ain't helping you on the field. Um, so we'll see what happens here. But I didn't think there was any chance in heck that they'd sign this guy Adam Schefter seems to report that they might have some interest. Um, And we'll see. We will see. Uh, One thing I want to say, too, about the offensive line, this story ties into the running game and ties into the game with San Francisco. Jesse Davis moved to left tackle this week. Uh, Robert Hunt moved to right tackle. They didn't miss a beat, E. They did not miss a beat. 
And with this offensive line this year, the one thing I noticed in this game especially, they are a big group, which we know with Solomon Kinley. I mean, they're just a, it's just a lot of mass. They're big guys. And this offensive line, and I saw it this week specifically, which I think is something that they, which will be a trend, not just the rest of this year, but years forward. They're so big that they're going to wear down opponents and over the course of four quarters. So you could face a team with a great pass rush by the end of the game. When you got Solomon Kinley, you know, Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt laying on you for three and a half quarters. By the end of the game, your pass rush skills are just nil because you're exhausted because you got these big guys just constantly on top of you for two, three quarters. This offensive line, it's not there yet, but it's damn close. It has the potential to be special. And I think they're going to start to wear down opponents' offensive lines, you know, not just the rest of this year, but for years to come because. They got some big boys up there, and they're playing well. And and I was very concerned, and I didn't I didn't really vocalize this too much, but when Austin Jackson was placed on IR, I was concerned that Robert Hunt was going to come in, that maybe he wasn't ready, you know, and then the move with Jesse Davis wasn't going to work out. And I was I was worried, especially with you know what everybody was saying about how great the San Francisco 49ers defensive line was, even though I know they're missing Bosa and um, you know they've got some other major injuries there. I was overly impressed. And I think what the message that it sent to me was when Austin Jackson is healthy, you've got you've got great starters starting 100 percent of the game and you've got potential starters that are waiting in the wings that can fill in if one of your guys goes down in the middle of the game. And I probably mentioned that three or four times on our podcast, Mike. It's true. It's so important to have that backup because every starter gets hurt at some point even if it's just for a series or even if it's just for a play or it might be a half of a game, every starter on the offensive line will get hurt at some point. And it's great to have that flexibility. Um, And I know Flores over the last two drafts, he has tried to bring in guys and free agency. He's tried to bring in guys that can be flexible and that can jump from one spot to the other spot. And you see that by moving Jesse Davis to the left and bringing in Robert Hunt to the right side. Um, it made a huge difference. And I'll tell you, too, I do have to give some credit to uh, to Ryan Fitzpatrick because he did avoid a couple of sacks. There were some times where he was getting some pressure before that huge touchdown pass to Preston Williams right down the middle of the field. I think it was like a 30 or 40 yard pass for the touchdown. He got hit right in the middle of the stomach. So he was getting the ball out as quickly as he could. And he was avoiding the sacks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I will say this. If Robert Hunt plays well when Austin Jackson's out, and we don't know Jackson out, he could be out for, he has to miss at least three weeks, not three games, three weeks. So he could be out maybe a month, five weeks, we don't know, or he might be out the rest of the year. Let's assume it's a short-term injury, just for my argument. If it's a short-term injury, let's say he misses a month. If Robert Hunt plays well in that month, Jesse Davis ain't getting his job back. Jesse Davis goes to the bench because we have to prepare for the future. And that's not a knock on Jesse Davis. Nope. But Jesse Davis can play left tackle, right tackle, right guard, and even some left guard and center. He's the guy you want coming off the bench, honestly. He really is because you can plug him in everywhere. He has experience in all five spots. Well, not really center, but he can do it in a pinch. Um, so watch Hunt here the next few games because if he plays well, this will be a Wally Pip story. Jesse Davis ain't getting his job back. That's just the reality of the NFL, folks. It's not fair sometimes. But how things work. Agreed. Okay. Completely. It is time. It is time. Is it time? Now, it's time. We promoted the last week's show, you know, since we have been co hosting here, broke all records. Like I said, you know, Joe Rogan, Bill Simmons, eat your heart out. We shattered records. Ian Rappaport heard our show and he got himself suspended for two weeks. That's which, right. by the way, when I saw that news, I sent out a press release that Saturday morning, which I know you saw, and I, well, I sent out two press releases. Number one, we strongly disagree with Roger Goodell in the NFL in the suspension of Ian Rappaport. The man is just trying to promote Manscaped and promote proper male grooming. What is wrong with that? The Lawnmower 3.0, too. After we did it Thursday, he got himself in trouble Friday night. He must have seen our he must Absolutely. have seen our ad and he Absolutely. knew what we were doing. And he was Absolutely. You know. And then after that, I did promote you to CBO, Chief Brand Officer at DolphinsTalk.com, because you have done so well 
with our Manscaped promotion and so much. And this week, yes, see, look at you. You have all the products ready to go. And because San Francisco won, it's time. Yeah, and, and I, I was about to say, too, I think I got promoted because I, I said the words ball deodorant on your podcast. I think that always does it. <laughs> it does um, it. So. <laughs> Won me over. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's just All right. Point. So anyway, on a serious note, I did promise I was going to shave part of my body. Serious right? note? Really? You just yeah. said on a serious note? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you do have, and I'm just going to point this out real quick. You do have like the little trimmer that gives you a little bit of space. And I thought there were more, but it is actually just the one. And it, it, you add it to your clipper and it snaps on really nicely. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually unbutton my shirt. And here. for those of you not watching on YouTube, just to make so it's crystal clear, it's a family show. He's going to shave a little bit of his chest. He's not shaving yeah, down there. Because I, I know everyone's not watching. Cross. We will get canceled. We will get canceled, kicked off YouTube, and in a whole lot of trouble. This is just for those of you not watching, he's just shaving a little bit of his chest. If, if you haven't been able to tell, this is very tongue in cheek. Okay. Yeah. And my wife would never allow me on the computer ever again, <laughs> just so you know that. Yes. And as you shave, well, I should let the people here go. Just go for it. Yeah. And you see the light, too. I love this light, LED. Beautiful. Color. Listen to that. It's. Look at. Well. <laughs> it's smooth, it's, man. Smooth. Not catching at all? No, not at all. And if, for anybody who wants to buy the Lawnmower 3.0 or any Manscaped products, be sure to go to manscaped.com, use the promo code Dolphins Talk and save 20% on your order. Promo code Dolphins Talk is E Shaves Away here for those of you watching on YouTube. Let me read you um, some stuff here from Manscaped. Autumn is in the air, and Manscaped is here to ensure you don't carve your pumpkins when you're grooming. By pumpkins, we actually mean your boys downstairs. In fact, Manscaped is on a mission to change the way you approach caring for your balls. And great news, they just released their products in the UK, Canada, and Australia. Now, E, I might have told you a story off the air, which we are actually huge in Australia, because a few years back, um, I wrote a story, I forget, oh, it was when Lawrence Timmons went AWOL prior to the week one game. Yep. Uh, there was whoever the biggest sports radio host is in Australia. I forgot the guy's name. Wrote, uh, he reported that off of our website. And one day I wake up, I'm checking our numbers, and I'm seeing we got, like, I don't know, like 50,000 people on our website from Australia. I'm like, what the heck happened? How did... <laughs> he might get, like, you know, 100 or 200 from, you know, there in a week. 50,000 overnight, what happened? And people started following me on Twitter from Australia. So I pinged a couple, and they told me, we heard about your site on this guy's show, which I forgot the name of the show, honestly. And I'm like, oh, so we are huge in Australia. So for all of our Australian listeners here at DolphinsTalk.com, go to Manscaped.com, use the promo code DolphinsTalk. And also in the UK, we got a bunch of UK listeners, like uh, I mean, just so many. So go there, use the promo code, buy the lawnmower 3.0, buy the new Weed Whacker, the ear and nose hair trimmer that uses this, the skin-safe technology that E is showing here. With the lawnmower 3.0 on his chest, that's that is what they call their advanced skin safe technology. Um, they got the crop cleanser, the crop mop, and all the good stuff. So manscaped.com, save 20%, use a promo code Dolphins Talk. Um, e, here's it. I'll make you another deal. If the Dolphins win the Super Bowl, you shave yourself from head to toe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't think you'd I, have a problem with that, though. You'd be so happy. <laughs> I, I probably would be okay with that. I'd have to. My friends have told me I need to shave my head, too. So it's possible because I've got I'm missing a little in the front here. So it might be that it might not be a bad to, idea. Like, censor that. I don't know. <laughs> this joke has gone on long enough. Okay. But everyone, for sure. Though. I'll make the agreement, though, Mike. Save okay. this. Save this podcast. October 15th, Save this podcast. 20. I will make that. I will agreement. mark it down on my calendar, October right. 15th. But all jokes aside, everyone, go to Manscaped. They do have great products. They really do. We have a lot of fun with it, but they have some amazing products. And as I say every week, you can place a small order for five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks. You're still saving 20% with their promo code. You can place a huge order and get all their, you know, higher end products, let's just say, and you're still saving 20%. So check it out. And, uh, and you know, Christmas is coming up. You might have someone in your life, a husband or boyfriend or a brother or whatever. You can. These are good products that uh, 
men can use. I know. I mean, we joke aside, I use a couple of these things because um, they do have some good stuff, especially I will promote one thing I use a lot now, the foot spray. The foot spray is fantastic. It does. It, it's just, you just give it a squirt, you know, every, whatever you need, let's just say. And um, it's actually very, very good. So everyone check out Manscaped. So just one now, last thing too. Yes. I want to let everybody know now that I have shaved an area of my chest, it's not itchy. It's not scratchy. You know, sometimes if you shave too close, um, even on, like on your face, at different parts of your body, you'll get like really itchy and scratchy. It's fine. It's very smooth. So anyway, I just wanted the before and after so that everybody can feel what I'm feeling right now. Yep. And uh, I just put the ball deodorant on my hand because it <laughs> smells so damn good. I'm not doing anything more with that. By no, the way. That's, that's good. That's good. Uh, I guess the bad news to come out of this week's game was the injury to Devon Gottschow. And, you know, it sounds like he's going for a second opinion. It sounds like he's going to try and fight through it. But honestly, with a torn bicep, that's a painful one. I, I've seen very few people, especially in football, try to fight through it. I think he's lost for the year. Um, and that it, it's a crappy situation because he's in the final year of his deal. So he was playing for a big paycheck. And, you know, it's a tough spot to fill. Yeah, I, I, I hope the best for him. I mean, you hate to see a guy that's been with us for a couple of years that he's He's really been a contributor for us, and he's been through the tough days with us, um, and he's really been able to survive. Really, if you think about it, you know there was weren't too many teams that were, or there weren't, excuse me, there weren't too many players left from the the roster two years ago. But he stuck around, you know, and he was he was starting and he was playing and he was actually doing very very well. Um, so he, it's going to be some tough shoes to fill, but you've got you know, Raekwon Davis that you want to see kind of jump in there. You, you've got a Jason Strobridge that, that you want to see some of these rookies start getting the opportunity. And you know, that, that defensive line this past weekend against San Francisco, they look darn good. They were animals really out did. There. They were animals out there. Yeah, they They're really were, it. you know, and, and five sacks from five different defenders. How often do you see that? Usually you got like one or two guys that are like carrying the load for the entire team. These guys were were flying around the entire day from start to finish, and that was that was so encouraging. and And I really want to see that this weekend too. <laughs> I, know. I know we'll talk about that in a bit. I will okay. say this though: the three names, like you said, um, Jason Strobridge should be active every week. Now he's been inactive every game. I would expect he'll be active. He can play inside a little bit as well in certain passing situations. Zach Sealer should be the new starter there. He's been Love sensational yes. so far. I think he's going to be the one to step in the start. I know a lot of fans have been saying, Raekwon Davis, next man up, Raekwon Davis. This is not – next man up is a saying I just despise. He, it drives me nuts because every situation isn't next man up. There are times some guys are you just can't replace, and this is actually one of them. This isn't a next man up, next man up type situation. This is a – what I like to call it takes a village type yes. situation. Yep. It's going to take a few guys here – to make up for the loss of Devon Gacho. And those are three names, Raekwon Davis, Zach Sealer, and Jason Strobridge. So I'd be surprised if they sign someone who's currently out there on the open market. It's possible, but that's just not their MO. That's not how they operate. They usually promote from, with, from within and play the kids. So that's what I think they're going to do. We'll see how it works out this weekend, but I think this weekend is a great opportunity to, to maybe throw in, throw in some of those younger guys um, with playing, you know, playing the what are, what are they? Oh, and five are they? Oh, and they're oh, and five, lost them right? All. They have oh lost and them five all, jets, and they've okay. lost them all in crappy, uninspiring, ugly fashion. I wrote okay. an article, let's get to this game this week. Yes. I wrote an article on Tuesday night, yes, on Tuesday night. Um, that's up on the website right now. And I know a lot of people are mad because they go, You're gonna jinx us, you're gonna jinx us. Oh, no, yeah, folks, not. folks, <laughs> the New York Jets are historically bad. Yes. They aren't just a bad team this year. Historically bad. I went on to say, and I firmly 100% believe this, they are the worst team in the history of the NFL. They have nothing. I, I know some fans point to the 2007 Miami Dolphins that went 1-15. Yes, that team was bad. That team had a few players, Ronnie Brown, some other guy, who could actually play in this league. This team has nothing. They literally have nothing. What little they had in Adams and Bell is now gone. Sam Darnold out this week, now playing. Third tight end, who all offseason, Chris 
turned and everyone was so high on him. They were high on him. They had high hopes for him. They thought he was going to be, you know, you know, a top half of the league type tight end. Not, you know, top of the league, but top half, top 15 level. Type. He's terrible to the point where people are starting to think they might have to outright let him go. He's been so bad. Their wide receivers, number one, Jamison Crowder. You're going up against Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Well, they got nobody who can get open. They're wide receivers. You can't name one after Crowder. They're that bad. Their offensive line so far stinks. Joe Flacco's playing this week, 35, coming off neck surgery that he just had in May. If you, He can't move to save his life. I said he makes a cigar shop wooden Indian look mobile. He can't move. <laughs> the man can't move. He's terrible. And then on the other side of the ball, Neville Hewitt's like their best linebacker. Nice guy. Nice guy. He spent time in Miami. Not a starting linebacker in this league. And if he's your best linebacker, maybe he's not their best. But the fact he starts for them should tell you something. This team has nothing anywhere. They And they hate their head coach. They quit on their head coach. They don't even like their head coach. At least in Miami, some of the players like Gase. None of the Jets like Gase. They all hate him. They can't stand him. And... They are not going to put up a fight. The Miami Dolphins this week will win this game. They will win it easily. They will be at 500 going into a bye, and it's not even up for debate, folks. I, I agree. And one thing, Mike, too, and you mentioned about the 2007 1-15 Dolphins, I think one of the other major differences between these two teams was the Dolphins players in 2007, they loved Cam Cameron. They were trying so hard to win for him. Unfortunately, he he didn't have all the X's and O's that you needed for a full team. And and also that was the year we took Ted Ginn Jr. really yeah, early and it wasn't the right pick. And it, it, it didn't work out then. Obviously, he's had a really nice career. But um, like you said, nobody likes Gase. Nobody likes Gase. And I like and and I, I tweeted it out today. When you think about Gase's career as a head coach, as a head coach of the Dolphins and for the New York Jets. Are there really any players that he, as a head coach, has made better? No. And I don't think there is one player that you can say, this player got better because of Adam Gase. Now, I will say, players that were under Adam Gase and had played for a team that he had coached, once they went to other teams, they got better under other coaches, but not while they were with Adam Gase. And that's that's unfortunate, and, you know... I. I, I talk. I've talked to a couple of Jets fans, and they just think that he is, he is so bad. Everybody he, I talk to says he's so bad. Adam Gates is. I always like to say, here with the stupid. He is. You know, the guy just he has. He's clueless, but just has fallen into golden opportunity after golden opportunity because he's friends with Peyton Manning. Let's just be honest. That, that's the only. That's the only reason he was hired by the Jets in Miami. They might. They might have hired him anyways. But the call from Peyton Manning don't hurt. Owners are impressed, folks. They're impressed. And if Peyton Manning, if he's going to come down in training camp and spend a couple days and rub elbows with the owners, they kind of like that. Hey, I'm hanging out with Peyton Manning. Let me take some pictures, send them to my grandkids. Hey, Peyton's here. It's they, That's what they like. It works. Like we said last week, owners are just rich fans. You can influence them. And, you know, Gase has fooled a couple teams now. He And as I said last week after Miami beat San Francisco, and it's – and thank God, I prayed the Jets wouldn't fire Gase this past week because I want the Miami Dolphins to be the team that sends Adam Gase into an early offseason. I want this to be the week after Miami beats their balls off, speaking of balls, beats their <laughs> balls off to say, okay, Gase, now you're fired. And I hope it's this week. Um, you know, the Jets don't have anybody who can cover Parker. They don't have anybody who can cover Mike Jasicki. If Preston Williams is back to his 2019 form, they really have nobody who can cover a third guy. Forget yeah. about that. You know, I even said in my article, Fitzpatrick could throw three interceptions. They're still going to win because they're that bad of a team. And that, I don't. Th and I think as fans of the Dolphins, see, I'm up here in the Northeast. I'm around it more. I see them more because it's just in my face more. You know, I think fans down south or fans in other parts of the country, the Dolphins, don't realize how bad they truly are. I mean, you look, if just take 10 seconds. Look at their roster, this week's roster for the Jets. You won't recognize three names. They're that bad. And, you know, Miami should win easily. Uh, and everyone last week was complaining about the schedule change. Miami's getting punished. Miami got screwed. E, this schedule change couldn't have worked out better. Moving up the bye week from week 
11 to 7 is just great. It gives someone like Austin Jackson, if he can return, you know, one less game he might have to miss. Jones, now he'll be back for two games, then he'll have a little time to rest. So I'm sure after the bye, he'll truly be 100%. Works out there. We get the Jets now. I want them now because, you know, I don't think they'll turn it around late, but why risk it? I want them now. This could yeah. have worked out better. Yeah, I, I love the fact that we've got this buy a little early now, too. And, and being able to go into the buy potentially at 500. I mean, who would have thunk that with this, the way that we started last year versus the way that we started this year? And once you get to three and three, and once the Bills play the Chiefs, which I think a lot of people are saying that's going to be a loss to the Bills. Obviously, the game still has to be played, but you know the Chiefs are, are a very potent team altogether. And they're you know, coming off a loss. And they're coming off they're a loss, exactly. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of optimism that, hey, the Dolphins are not out of a playoff race. And if, if that scenario can happen and we go into the bye with the win and Buffalo goes into the bye with the loss, then you start talking about the math to get you to AFC East champions, which is not out of the question. We don't like to talk about that because we want to make sure that we see some stuff you know, string I'm, together. But you read my mind because as you were saying that, I just punched up the schedule for the Bills. And their schedule from this point on gets a little bit more challenging. Let's go through it. Monday night, Kansas City. Okay, Kansas City's coming off a loss. I would not want to face them coming off a loss. That's all I'm going to say. Then they got the Jets. That's a win. Okay. Then they got Patriots, Seattle, Arizona, who's a little bit dangerous at Arizona. So it's on the road against Arizona. That's no walk in the park. Um, They got the Chargers. Then San Francisco should be healthier. Pittsburgh, you know, their schedule here from October 19th, I would say through December 13th, gets more challenging. Now, look, I'm not sitting here saying that the Miami Dolphins are going to make a run at the AFC East. I'm just saying if they can get to three and three, go into the bye. Get healthy. They still have to play Cincinnati. And they're going to have a three-game stretch, Miami, of um, the Jets, the Broncos, and Cincinnati in some order. I'm not sure because it changed so much. That's, you know, three winnable games for Miami right there where they can make up some hay. Um, You know, Rams and Chargers, maybe come out of that with a split. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And, you know, let's go. And then they do have a game at Arizona, who's kind of up and down most weeks. It's not inconceivable that they can make a run at the wild card. I think if they can win this week at the three and three, a run at the wild because the AFC is terrible. The AFC yeah. is downright. Houston stinks this year. Yeah. I mean, Indianapolis, I know they're okay. If you watch them play for five minutes, that's a team that is about to fall off the rails. Their offense is terrible. Um, AFC North is dangerous because you're going to get a few playoff teams there with the Browns, with the with Pittsburgh and the Ravens. Out west, the Raiders are dangerous, but you know. Um, you got the Broncos stink. You got the Chargers. They always find a way to lose. They're, with the extra playoff seed this year in the AFC, it's not crazy to think wild card. And if the Bills start to trip over themselves, hey, crazier things have happened. The, the, the call for a potential Dolphins playoff spot, even if it's a wild card, is going to get a lot louder if we win on Sunday, as everyone is expecting. And I think the, the line right now is at eight points to Miami. Eight is and a half yesterday, because I will half? be going to my local establishment, which is legal <laughs> in this state. It is legal, so it's nothing unsavory, folks. Yes. Um, there was, uh, probably either later today on Thursday or on Friday, I will be going to my local establishment, placing a large sum of money on the Miami Dolphins, minus eight and a half. I got to lock it in at eight and a half. I don't want that number to climb up to nine or ten. Not that I have any fear. I just widely nine or ten if you can lay eight and a half. It's just common sense. Absolutely. So also, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? E? Week seventeen. Assuming there's no week eighteen. Buffalo. Week seven. Week at 17. Buffalo, man. No, oh, no, 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 no. It's in my uh, oh yes, it is at Buffalo. So I was in Miami. I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong schedule. Um week Sunday, January third. Miami going up to the cold. Snow, wet, rainy, dreary. And this time they got an offensive line to ram it down their freaking throat. Hopefully, if that game is meaningful for both teams, maybe I don't want to say AFC's title on line. That's getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. But if it were, that would bring me back to 1992 or 1993 in my childhood, and I'd be eating it up. I love, uh, it. I love that too. I love that too. And and two, that type of scenario would also lead to another primetime game. And oh, I think likely. I think people, a lot of the Dolphins fans, aren't scared as much about primetime games after we beat Jacksonville so handily a couple weeks ago. So bring it, 
Bring bring some of those flex and games. Let's it watch it. It will be an empty stadium because my governor Andrew Cuomo ain't letting fans in any stadiums anytime soon. So we don't have to like put a home up game except cold. We don't have to put up with the Bills mafia. They can stay home and jump through their own tables right in front of their own <laughs> Christmas tree. Jump through the Christmas tree. I don't give a crap. We yes. will play in an empty stadium at Ralph Wilson, New Era, whatever they they go through as many names now with their stadium like we do. So whatever they call it these days, they'll go through it. Um, it's going to be a cold, hard rock stadium is what it's going to be. It's going to be a home game except cold, right? It'll be cold rock stadium, we'll call it. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good name, actually. Cold rock stadium. So, E, that's all for today's big show. Oh, well, Um, I want to do my prediction, though. Oh, we got my prediction. prediction. Yes, let's do predictions. Dolphins, Jets, hard rock stadium. You'll be there. You didn't plan on going to a home game this week. You're going to be there. Yep. So, what's your prediction? So, I'm bringing my daughter. We're going to put our magnets on. We're going to do everything for good luck, and and it's going to sunday just so you know because that's what everybody said it has to be my birthday right. um it's gonna we're gonna end up beating the jets 35 to 10 um so You're it's, it's 10, huh? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm giving them 10 because here's the thing desperate teams take desperate actions you know and that could be fake punts that could be flea flickers that you know look at what look at what we did last year when we were 0 and 5, 0 and 6, 0 and 7. Every week it felt like we were doing something a little different to try and add points to the board. So I think the Jets are going to ultimately score, but it's not going to be the traditional way. That's my opinion. But well, I still think we're going to beat them hard. Everything you said is true if a team likes their head coach. Drew true liked too. their head coach last year. This team hates their head coach. They despise their head coach. It came out on Wednesday that the Jets, the front office, Gase, general managers, they had a big meeting. They go, maybe Gase to sort of mix things up would sort of pass off the play calling to one of the assistants, probably Loggins, who was here in Miami. And then Adam Gates made the final decision. He goes, no, I'm going to keep calling plays, which I give him credit for. I like to pick on Gates. If you're going to go down with a sinking ship, you might as well go all the way down with it. Why pass, why pass it up to someone else so you can point the finger at someone else? He, he knows he's going down with a sinking ship. You know, might as well keep calling the plays. Why not? So with that, my prediction – is Miami 40, the Jets 3. They'll get a late Whoa, field. Adam man. Gase will kick a late field goal, and then after the game, immediately after the game. Which? Christopher Adam, Johnson. we'd like to, uh, Christ- uh, Mr. Gase, we'd like to speak to you on the separate plane as besides soon the team as plane. the plane lands in LaGuardia, because most likely it's the Jets. You know they're flying out of freaking LaGuardia. As soon as the plane lands in LaGuardia, Christopher Johnson will be like, Mr. Gase, can you come to my office, please? And he will be relieved of his duties and Stephen Ross can sip some champagne Sunday night into Monday, have some extra special coffee with his morning Cheerios and wheat toast on Monday morning, and read all the headlines about how the Jets have fired Adam Gase after a loss to the Miami Dolphins. We will be the reason why Adam Gase lost his job twice. Again. Again, Again. right. Yeah, yeah. So with that said, that's all for today's show. Let's get to all the plugs. Everyone, be sure to check out the website, DolphinsTalk.com. We got two great articles up right now on the website by Kevin Dern and Dante Colinelli. Everyone needs to check out. Kevin Dern did an in-depth analysis of Austin Jackson through the first four games he's played this year, broke down the film, has all the clips. It's an amazing article. Everything you want to know about Austin Jackson, you read this article. Dante Colinelli, who each and every week breaks down the All-22 film, for us here at the website, wrote an article about the Miami Dolphins' five sacks on Sunday. How they got the pass rush, how they generated the pass rush, how each how each sack was sort of unique in its way. A great article with the film, with the breakdown. Check it out. We're going to have new articles up on Thursday at some point from Armando, not Salguero, our own Armando, and Ryan Van Hoover. So check that out. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Dolphins Talking, folks. When Look, I have to say this, E. Wednesday night, a couple people on Twitter, you know, they start cursing me out. And I hate Twitter. It really is the cesspool. I mean, there's a lot of great people. I've met some great people on it. There's a lot of nice people. Don't get me wrong. But there's a segment that just want to argue. And when they can't articulate a point, they feel the need to swear. I don't, I'm 43 years old, folks. When I sign on to, tw- when I sign on to Twitter, if you're going to swear at me, you're just getting blocked. Because I don't have the energy at my age to argue when you're just going to, if you cannot, if I, if you don't see things the same way as me, that's cool. Just talk to me like a person. But if you're just going to start cursing me out, you're getting blocked. And I hate to do it. I really do feel bad because I hate to turn people away because this is almost like a small little business. But you got to be respectful. It's just football at the end of the day. So everyone follow me there at 
Dolphins Talk E. They can find you at Ian693 and also your YouTube channel. I'll let you plug. Big E, but you have to do the Big E searching Miami Dolphins Big E or else you're going to get the wrestler Big E. I know I'm I know I'm catching up to his popularity, but still you Big are. E Miami Dolphins. After this show, you might surpass it. And <laughs> okay. Big E is a very good professional wrestler. I don't yes. watch it like I used to. I check in every now and then. He is actually a very nice man, too, in real life um, from everything I've heard. But uh, not that Big E. You got to follow our Big E with the Miami Dolphins and the DolphinsTalk.com two-minute drill he puts out every Wednesday. Check that out. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. We're going to have more podcasts. Sunday, we'll have the pregame show with Tom and Dante, the postgame wrap-up show with myself and Tom. And, you know, this week, sit back and enjoy, because I'd be st- I'd be stunned if the Miami Dolphins lost the Jets. I'd, I First off, I'd be heartbroken. Next week's show, I'm going to be miserable if they ever found a way to lose this game. I'd be, sp- I would be stunned because they are that bad. I don't think I've been this confident about a football game in two seasons. Me, Let's oh, just say two. That. Yeah. It's, it's probably been longer yeah. than two. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You're right. Good point. <laughs> it's been longer than Good two. point. But I'm yeah. thinking with the time with Coach Flores, yes, I've never yes. been this confident about a football, football and game. And it's mainly because of the Jets. They suck. Yeah. So does Adam Gase. So, everyone, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And we'll talk to you again after a while. Fins up.